Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Julia Carlson on our show, and she is a financial advisor, and she just came out with a new book called Money Loves You, and I'm very excited because this is a great book. It's a very unique book because she not only talks about money from a financial perspective, but she talks about money and mindset and how that affects the way you could actually elevate your your money and your business or your whole income overall. And she goes into that a little further during our conversation. But right now, I'd love to introduce Julia to you. Julia, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Okay. Hello, Stacy. I'm happy to be here today. Uh, I have, you know, money has been my whole world for my, uh, <laughs> my most of my grown up life. <laughs> so <laughs> I actually get, I got licensed as a financial advisor when I was 20. So <laughs> I've been doing this for over 27 years and, um, you know, I have a good money story and what I've realized in working with so many clients is that is a unique thing. So yeah. not, not a lot of us grow up with a, with a good, healthy money story. And so right. It's been really fun to actually help others transform their mindset and actually uh, have this really positive personal relationship with money and empowerment. And so, um, you know, I not only have a wealth management firm, but I just wrote a book and I'm excited to share about that. And then I also have three kids and an amazing husband. So it's kind of like life's very full and um, yeah, but I just, I just love how I integrate it all and, and help others. So, so what made you really like inspired you to like have this passion to write this book? Like usually something, something really sparks you to really want to write a book. And what was your inspiration in that spark? I think it's a lot of it is my journey and the stories. And so, although I didn't have these limiting beliefs with money, Mm -hmm. I, I did have it in the sense of Uh, feeling that I wasn't smart enough. I don't have a college degree. So I don't, I, I I took a very alternate route to be a successful business owner. Mm -hmm. And so, and what I've discovered is there's a parallel to these limiting beliefs that we have that hold us back. And then in my uh, firm and helping, you know, over a thousand clients, I've seen so many of their mindsets holding them back with money. Um, And so It just felt like this was the right time to bring this message out to the world and to really help people think differently. Because when can when when it when people get it, it like it can change in an instant. And so, I just feel like really inspired to like help people have that aha moment with money. So, what is actually that aha moment? You know, like what you know, like you know, what do people really need to realize? Because I know there's a lot of myths out there. You know, people always you you go onto the internet, for example, and there are so many different ways. You know, how to be a millionaire, how to do this, how to do that, how to make a million bucks. You know, all these things. You want to make seven figures, six figures, blah 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 blah. You know, but what you know, what are the real truths and the real myths that you know we should really look out for when it comes to actually, you know, generating a healthy income and, and moving forward in life? Well, first I would say it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, yeah, and, exactly. and it is work. Like we do have to like uh, learn and be empowered and, and continue on that journey. And I would also say that it's, when I say it can happen in an instant, it's, uh, it's that mindset shift. So let me, so for example, clients will come to me and like money stresses me out. I just, mm. I don't get it. Julia, I can make a lot of money, but I just can't seem to hold on to it. Like that's a very <laughs> common, like people are great at making money, but it's like, how do they manage it and be a good steward over it and, and direct it? And so it's, it's really having a plan yeah. and, and staying disciplined and true to that plan. But it's also having a plan that it's their personal, like personal finance is personal. Yeah. So I can't actually tell someone, Hey, this is what you should do. If right. that's not what they feel like they should do. Exactly. So uh, that financial freedom happens for the person that puts their financial plan into place that's individual for them. Mm -hmm. So they own it. I can't tell them what to do. They're driving it. Yes. And then they're on purpose. It's like having this framework doesn't need to be complicated, Yeah. but, but just starting to take those imperfect action because 
when we're in overwhelm, when we're in stress, we just kind of avoid it and ignore it. Yeah. And that, that doesn't actually help us make forward momentum. Exactly. So it's, it's that little imperfect action. A lot of times that creates that momentum that helps us like, Oh, I, I can look at my money differently. I don't, I, I have a tool we can talk about called the anti-budget <laughs> because <laughs> people hate to budget. So it's like, how do we get people to think differently around money? Uh, yeah. Because, and the money, the book is called Money Loves You. So <laughs> that's fun. Now, you know, when it comes to money, a lot of people get it and they can't hold on to it. You know, like it's like as soon as they get money, they feel like they have to reinvest it in something. They don't want to, you know, it's like they feel like, you know, okay, the only way to make money is to invest money, you know, and right away they're looking for other ways to reinvest. And a lot of times it's not always the smartest move that I've seen, you know, like I'm not a financial advisor, but I see people jump into things too quickly without doing proper research or yeah. without really looking at how difficult the task is going to be because everyone makes things look very simple and they make it look, you know, perfectly gift wrapped, but then underneath, you know, it's a lot more, you know, you know, when you look at something, they always say, if it looks too good to be true, that it's probably not, you know? So, you know, what's your advice when it comes to, you know, when people make money, what's the first step? Do they start looking to reinvest or is it something that they, you know, let's, let's start saving our money and really thinking about what we want to do with it constructively so we could actually grow our business properly. Properly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's two pieces to that, right? It's mm -hmm. the, it's the sense of, um, worthiness. So understanding, like for me, I was like, my success was actually driven. Like I was so driven. I was chasing my worthiness. Like if I hit this level, if I had a hundred thousand of it, personal income, then I'll feel worthy. If I had a million, yeah. then I'll feel worthy. If I hit this, then I'll, and I never was. Yeah. And so, and it was like this chase for more. And so I think once I could realize, number one, I, I am worthy just as I am. And we all are. Yes. And so that's, that's that first piece is your self-worth must be always bigger than your net worth yeah. uh, because then you're not chasing, but you, and you can come from a place of uh, peace and contentment and I think when we can listen to that still small voice within, we're not mm. making these rash decisions. Right. And there's a there's a chapter in, in my book called Trust Yourself. Mm -hmm. Because innately we know what's right for us. Yeah. And you know, a lot a, a lot of entrepreneurs that I help, business owners, it's like I, I ask them the question, like, did you go in business to to pay everyone else <laughs> to not build this beautiful life that you want? And so it's understanding what your priorities are, which could be getting out of debt, which could be, you know, saving for a new home or saving um, for retirement. Like, you know, as business owners, no one's saving for us for our future. Yeah. We have to do that. So that I think, helps. yeah. So, you know, making sure that you have, you're protecting yourself, your family first and securing that financial foundation then thinking about, okay, reinvesting in your business. Yes, that makes sense. I always say you're, you are your best investment. Yeah. But just you, you need to, to do that, but in, in balance with the other things that are important in your life. Uh, it sounds really like a very smart idea. I think so many people, you know, I think that's the, one of the biggest problems is that people always, they get to a certain level and they want more and more and more and more. And that self-worth, I think that's one of the biggest problems. Once you said that, it was like the light bulb went off. It's like, I see that in so many people, you yeah. know, they're doing so well and then they get to that certain level and then they want more and more. And then you see them branching out and they branch out too much to the point where yeah. they can't really handle everything they they've just created for themselves. And that's when I think it starts to fall. Right. Yeah. And they take unnecessary risks. Like, uh, we see this when, uh, people have sudden wealth, right. They'll inherit, you know, $2 million from their parents and they, they haven't been successful with money up until that point. Right. And I mean, literally it just slips right through their fingers because yeah. they're grasping for, like, oh, I'm not worthy of this. Oh, maybe the, maybe the car will make me feel better. Maybe the new home will make me feel better. And if you're not evolving internally, it's like that inner wealth builds your outer wealth. Yeah. And so we must evolve personally 
you know, at, as we're developing our character and, and our responsibility, it's like, you know, you're responsible with a little bit, you'll, re you'll be responsible with even more. Right. And I think that's this, that's the secret of building wealth. Like once you start seeing, um, your, your nest egg grow and you're responsible and you're making good choices, like only good can follow from that. Yeah. So. No, that's very true. Now, when your book, your book fo focuses on mindset, like, you know, it's different than other books. So what are some steps? What are some different types of mindset tools that we can incorporate into our, our businesses or into our lives to help us in our financial journey? Yeah. So I think, I, I, I think definitely understanding, um, you know, that what are you, what are you, what are you going for? Like, does it make sense? Your goals make sense for you personally, right? Doing this for somebody outside or, or for, for you. So I think what drives you is really important. That self-worth is, is hugely critical. And then I think another piece is, you know, as business owners, we give and give and give, like, that's how I grew my business, right? Mm -hmm. Like, here, let me help you. And you, and I think, especially as women, we tend to give a lot. Yeah. Well, that's also points to we're in control a yeah. lot. And as a recovering control freak, you know, it's, it's like, I had a hard time receiving. And so there's actually a chapter called ready to receive. Right. And that's actually that surrender. It's, it's how do I let go and allow others to come in, whether you're building a business, building your net worth, it's like how, how, allowing others to come and and receiving gifts from them, which is bringing more people into your world, whether it be mentors or guides or coaches. If you're if we're receiving that, that actually gives to them in a yeah. way. So that's a that's a really beautiful thing that just felt like it came up. And then I think that it's instilling these wealth beliefs. So if you do have these feelings of I'm not smart enough with money. I, I, money stresses me out. You know, money is the root of all evil. Like we have these mindsets that may not even be ours. They could be our parents, our yep. caretakers, uh, and really examining, is that my truth? And yeah. if, and if you really do feel like that's like rooted in your subconscious, yeah. then there's a whole, um, I call it the wealth busters, but it's this, there's this whole framework to actually actually figure out how are you, how is that sabotaging your success? Right. And then how do we change that wealth buster into a wealth belief, which, right. and the process for that is willing to go down into like your thoughts. And, and there's this funny quote I have in the book, in the book um, called it's, it's hard to read the label when you're inside the jar. <laughs> <laughs> Like what our inner dialogue of how we talk to ourselves is so critical to yeah. our success in life and, and how, how we manifest things. And yeah. so it's like being willing to actually journal. I, I take, um, I take the readers through a process to actually journal down and like, what was that first memory and, and where, where, what's that juice and that real rooted belief that we need to get rid of yeah. and the secret to getting rid of it is how, how did that shape you into who you are today? Like right. we all do, it, it protects us somehow, or it, we can find a gift in it. And I think yeah. when we can find a gift in it and then let it go, we actually release that. Yeah. And then it makes room to receive a new wealth belief. Like money does love you. Yeah. Or I am smart enough. I can do this. Yeah. I am capable. And so it's like, filling, filling up the bucket with these wealth beliefs that, um, you know, that, that person that believes that it's ultimately going to be way more successful with money than someone that believes that money's against them. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I think that's so true and, and so important because I think we are our worst critics and I think we tend to be so hard on our own selves. And I think that's what sometimes holds us back is that we are, you know, so critical of our own selves and, and sometimes that could beat up on our own self-worth as well, you know, because we are, you know, self-doubt ourselves. And, and if you're trying to make money, you're trying to do well in business, the worst thing you could do is, is self-doubt yourself. You should, you know, you have to really work on that confidence, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. There's it like the, the whole idea behind money loves you is money loves you when you love you. 
Right. And when you can find, yeah, you may have made mistakes with money in the past, but it's like when you can find grace for yourself, when you can find forgiveness for those past mistakes and not let it hold you captive from moving forward, yeah. you know, that, that is financial freedom. That is that, oh, okay. I'm on my purpose. I got this. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, that's, that's the inspiration that I'm hoping will come through the book because there's so much guilt and shame and, and fear around money. So we need to like, just get that out. And like, just right. how do we move forward? Yeah. And what is some of the the shame and the guilt in, in money that people hold within themselves? Like some of the symptoms that people carry? Yeah. So I think, um, I think the shame, like for me, I mean, I used to hold, I used to hide shopping bags from my husband. (laughs) (laughs) I used to like, you know, it's like now, now, nowadays it's Amazon boxes, but Mm -hmm. now it's like in the past, I think it, when I think about it, it was, I didn't feel worthy. I didn't deserve these things. You know, that was the, that's the internal belief, Mm -hmm. but but I want to feel good. So I'm going to go and buy things. Right. Yeah. So I think retail therapy is definitely something to, <laughs> to dive into. Not, not from a shame perspective, but just from a curiosity. Like if you're feeling like you need to hide things yeah, or you're beating yourself up, like, Oh, you know, I went to, um, I, you know, I shopped online or I went to, you know, Nordstrom's or Target, whatever you, you pick your flavor. Yeah. <laughs> And you feel like annoyed or um, like, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. Or you beat yourself up. Like the trigger where you're triggered is where, where your transformation lies. Right. So really leaning into that internal thing that bubbles up in you, like don't run from that. That's actually going to, I think I talk about where transform your, your shame into your fame. (laughs) (laughs) So it's, um, you know, I, I, we all have different things, or maybe we've made a big money mistake. We maybe invested in something and lost all our money, or we hired a coach and then we didn't follow through, or, you know, it's, it's, we all have something that, that, that's like that internal, like, oh man, I'm just not good at this. Or I made a huge mistake and it all is for our benefit, right? That's the way I like to look at my past is if it was a regret or not, or mistake, it's like, all right, that happened, but it's, it's made you who you are today. Right. Right. Yeah. And I I think people need to realize that we're all not perfect. There is no such thing as perfect. Mistakes will be made, but you know, really it seems like what you're trying, your message is trying to get across is that we have to really feel good about ourselves. We have to not try to make really money, the, the center of it, but really work from the inside out instead of the outside in, it seems. Yeah. Like. If you work on the inside out, everything else will take care of it, uh, care, take care of itself. Right. Yeah. That's what it seems like, you know, it's, uh, you know, and so many times people focus more on the materialistic, you know, if I have X and X, you know, if I have that nice car or that big house, or if I have this and I have that, and I, if I have a Rolex, you know, this will make me, you know, look like the part and, you know, it'll show that I have the wealth and, and pe- people get fixated on trying to get those things. And, Really, it's it's not about that. It's about self satisfaction of, of of being able to achieve whatever your yeah. your goal is, whatever makes you feel good. That that definition of success, because everyone has a different definition of success. You know, reaching that level of success, and like you said, it all comes from the inside. Yeah, and nice things aren't bad. Like I love nice things. Yeah, but what I've discovered is the the gifts in that is who I've become in the process, which is exactly what you were just saying. It's like you, you become um, when you're when you're either building a business. I mean, building a business builds character, <laughs> yeah. but also being a mom and and exactly you know making mistakes and learning from them and evolving and growing and giving back. Like those are the true gifts in life. Yeah. yeah. Yes, the nice car is nice. The house is nice. All those things, and there's nothing wrong with having those things. Right. But those actually come when you're on this pursuit of being a better person. Yeah, no, totally, totally. And if you had to really like take like some of the things we talked about today and you really wanted to emphasize the importance 
of what listeners should really understand when it comes to, you know, making money or financially building your, your, your business or your, even your, your home and your, your income, no matter what you do, you know, what are some important factors that you, you know, that we've discussed that you want the listeners to understand? So I think that, I think the most important thing is that, um, face where you're at. I think that's the best advice I can give to people. And what I mean by that is sometimes we avoid in face of seeing truth. And so sometimes when you can put everything out on paper, like look exactly at your spending, look at your uh, net worth statement, which is looking at your assets and your liabilities and just seeing it for what it is without judgment, just knowing where you're starting and then make, I actually don't like long-term financial plans. I like 90 day sprints. So what progress can you make in the next 90 days? And just set these really simple goals that help you make this progress and momentum. Because Mm -hmm. once you can start seeing that momentum and seeing the progress, then, then you can start thinking about longer term. But I think it's when you're just starting out, just give like build that muscle of Uh, small sprints with your finances and um, just celebrate the wins. Yes. I like that. I like that a lot. Now you also said that you have a download that you offer your, the people who come to your, your website. Tell me a little about that download. Yeah. So uh, you can get my 31 hidden wealth busters. So if, if you feel like um, anything we've talked about today uh, like any of those beliefs, like money's overwhelming, money's hard. Uh, if you want to figure out how do I just get started and, and instill these beautiful wealth beliefs, yeah. uh, this free guide is for you. So it's 31 Hidden Wealth Busters. And uh, it's a little bit of, um, of the learning that you'll get from my books. So if you like that, you'll love my book, but it's uh, totally free, available to you on my website, Julia M as in money, Carlson, Julia M. Carlson.com. I love it. And your, your book, where can we find your book? Where are places people can go to buy your book? Yeah. The easiest place is Amazon. So just go to Amazon and look for money loves you, Julia Carlson. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. You know, I, I think it's so important because I think so many people, you know, struggle with money and especially in now and today's economy, people are always struggling, you know, they're trying to catch up from COVID, you know, and yeah. it's been a, it's been a harsh ride and people are starting to move forward, but it's still, it's still hard, you know, and, and you know, with inflation up and things going on in our economy, you know, it makes it hard for people. And so people put more pressure on themselves, but it sounds like when you change your mindset, and you really focus on the inside and, and, you know, instead of the outside and you work your way outward, like you said, things will come naturally and not to stress yourself out to really, you said to make a plan, to make those goals and to work on the inside out. And then things will start to take its place and start to roll in the right direction. And your book seems to show you those steps and those things on how to do that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I I really feel like this this book, especially if you've had struggle, with, you know, with money or like you just want to figure out a way to do it even better, like this book will meet you where you're at and really guide you along. Um and what I love about it is kind of like choose your own adventure. Like I'm not going to tell you the specific steps. Yeah. Because I do feel like you you may be ready for a different different order of those practical tools. So it's right. really like picking up what's best for you. Yeah. Um, and you get to decide. So this whole book is about empowering you. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Julia, for coming on the show. I hope you'll come and visit us again. I'd love to go more in depth about this because I think this is such an important topic. I think so many people are looking for constructive ways to learn how to change their mindset and to change their way of thinking and to really constructively plan a trajectory that's going to make them, you know, be more successful where they would want to be in three months, six months, nine months from now, 12 months, you know, but a lot of people don't know how to do that you know and yeah. so between mindset and between actually learning tools that could actually help change the way you actually do things I, it seems like you could actually change your whole your whole financial status and 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 maybe your your career will go in a totally 360 as things start to change you never know what's in in, in store for you in the future 
I agree. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. And I'd, I'd love to come back and chat more. Yes, me too. I'd love to have you back. Thank you so much for being on the show. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.